Good afternoon. Hope you are having a great time uh, and enjoying the conference. Uh, so I'm Asanka Bay Singh, um, and uh, I live in Folsom, California, uh, northeast of San Francisco, uh, with my wife, two kids, and I have two dogs as well. Uh, so I'm the CTO uh, at WSO2. WSO2 is a technology company that we are providing um, infrastructure software, but today I'm not going to speak about WSO2, and if you are interested, we have two booths, and you can come and uh, speak to me as well as uh, our colleagues. And I uh, authored this uh, concept, cell-based architecture, as well as a few other uh, concepts, and uh, uh, working in the industry for more than 20 years, so that's about me. Hey, everyone. Good afternoon, all. Um, and hi to all who are virtual. Uh, I truly appreciate it is a session after lunch. But let's be awake. Um, just with a, okay, let me first introduce myself. I'm Shweta Bora. I am lead architect at booking.com. Uh, however, a personal side of me is I'm an inventor and author. I have recently published this book called Decoding Platform Patterns. It is available worldwide uh, on Amazon. And if you stay back till end, there is something more for you to grab a copy today um, at a booth. So I'll be telling you at the end of it, uh, end of the session. Um, before we proceed and we talk about uh, cell-based architecture, just with a show of hands, how many of you know about cell-based architecture? OK. So quite few of you. And how many of you are using it in production? A little less. I can see two, three hands. No problem. So we'll go with the uh, introduction uh, of cell-based architecture and then proceeding. So the agenda-wise, we have introduction of cell-based architecture. We'll be then jumping into implementation and challenges of this architecture and the best practices in future where we are heading. With that said, Let's go to the biological cell, because that's where the cell emerged. It is, it is the beginning of everything. Cell is the smallest unit of life, where every cell contains certain organelles. Every cell is responsible for consumption, production, and entire metabolism of its own thing. So that's how it sustains its state and interacts with the outside ecosystem, and that's same exactly replicates to architecture, architectural uh, cell-based, any entity which you use, any component which you use. It has smallest unit, so you should not try and put everything in a cell, then we are diverging from that. It is self-contained unit, independently elastic, and it should have a clear communication boundaries. These are also kind of guiding principles which you should review when you are doing cell-based architecture. With that said, let me ask Asanka that you have um, authored an open source cell-based reference architecture. What made you do that? Yeah, so uh, open source is in our DNA as an organization as well. And um, uh, we uh, uh, like uh, put all our code open source. Same principle comes when it comes to these type of concepts as well. And we don't patent stuff because no point of doing that. If you put it to the community, it, has, it will get a um, lot of feedback as well as anybody can use it as well. So what we did, we released this uh, specification under Creative Commons. So feel free to contribute. Uh, you can send a PR and I'm happy to incorporate it to the specification. So I'll tell a little bit about how all this started and why we introduced a new uh, uh, style. As you see in the screen, like when I introduced this, uh, people thought I'm smoking. Uh, because nobody uh, understood why we need a, a new architecture style because those days microservices were very popular and people were blindly building systems using microservice architecture. So another thing we identified, people are releasing reference architectures, but those are vendor and technology specific, very like uh, tightly bound to vendors and technology. So I thought we need to have a reference architecture completely vendor and technology neutral that anybody can use it and build systems. That was one motive. And then there's another problem that uh, we identified. The architect designed something, developer developed something slightly different, 
And then the uh, SRE and deployment, uh, uh, sorry, DevOps uh, engineers, they go and deploy something completely different. There was no consistency in between design, development, and deployment. So we thought we need something a common architecture construct that you can take from architecture to development into design. That was another motive. And then the architects, I call them as PowerPoint architects, that they uh, draw nice architecture diagrams, but uh, as you see, the enterprise is not like that. You have many systems that we developed during last two decades, so we have to deal with them. And the architecture inside the enterprise is not that clean. So we need to find a way how you can map greenfield and brownfield as well. So that was another motive. And then uh, last but not least, this Death Star diagram, I don't know whether you can remember it. When microservices came into the picture, people started putting thousands of microservices and you can't find the dependencies, you can't find the ownership. Then we thought we need to find a way to uh, handle that problem as well. That is how all started. And as uh, Shweta explained, the idea came with biology and microbiology. That's how we cultivated this idea by putting some first principle thinking. Then what we did, we released the specification. And even you can go today and read the specification. If you go to cellbasearchitecture.org, you can read it. So myself and my mentor, Paul Fremantle, uh, who was our founding CTO, we authored the specification. And after that, I spoke at like more than 56 conferences about this uh, topic and then authored many articles. And then uh, uh, we introduced some uh, architecture as a code as well as a mathematical model to identify the cell boundaries. And then we did two implementations as well, reference implementations. First one called Celery and the second one called Corio. And if you are interested, you can come to our booth and get more information about that. So that is how all this started. So if you look at what cell-based architecture, there are many definitions in the industry today, but this is what we identified as what it is. So it's an architecture style addressing three things, application, deployment, and team architecture. Unfortunately, some of the definitions today only speaking about the deployment architecture. It is not looking at the application and team architecture. Those are two important things that we introduce when we create the specification. So if you look at the fundamentals like the biological cell, the cell has a boundary, and the atomic unit of cell-based architecture, we call it as a component. So component can be a microservice, component can be an integration, component can be any type of workload that you run inside a cell. Then there's a cell gateway, which handles the communication happening um, within the cell as well as uh, between uh, two cells. So those are the fundamental concepts that you get in the cell-based architecture. And the octagon is how you represent a cell. I have seen some people using hexagons, but I think a hexagon represents a microservice, not a cell, and it's an octagon. And then the cell communication is very, very important. So that's one fundamental thing that we introduced, that you have the uh, egress calls coming from southbound, and then there can be uh, communication happening westbound and eastbound uh, between cells uh, and doing this communication. And egress is really important, especially the southbound. It wasn't... Uh, popular uh, earlier, but uh, any enterprise, they are using many subsystems, right? It can be a SaaS uh, system of record, or it can be a large language model, or it can be a small or micro language model that you run in a uh, kind of a hardware local to that particular organization. All these things need to be considered and secured. So that is one thing that cell-based architecture bringing uh, to manage communication within the enterprise and then have a standard way uh, to uh, securely communicate within the cells as well as between cells. So uh, with that, uh, I would like uh, um, Sweta to explain about the use cases and what are the challenges uh, we hear in the industry. Thanks, Asanka. Um, 
industry use cases so good or bad every every technology has its good or bad cell ha cells are very intuitive and relatable so easy to understand but they come with their own problems so we'll talk about it but let's first talk about the challenges uh, with the use cases the first and foremost the best use case for a cell is domain segregation now when i say domain segregation which is what uh, we also at booking.com used it however today i'm not completely talking on behalf of booking but we i'm just telling you the across the board uh, my experience domain segregation can be based on your team based on your domain based on your product depends on your situation so it can be unique however if you are sure that you have those segregations existing and will remain there then that's the best case to start and segregate your cells according to that and go about it and we have plenty of examples uh, out in industry second and uh, very popular use case which is because microservices and containerized are meant to be separation in itself isolation in a form of pod or uh, kubernetes containers or whatever you call them and cell so microservices and containerized based uh, use cases are very popular third security and uh, and separation um now the places where you have strict regulations and you want to man maintain those boundaries very clearly where cell needs to be explicitly talking to each other and this is where i have uh, delved into this particular case in kubecon paris so more details there uh, uh, available in that talk but security and separation is one major case again other than domain we are also using it in booking for security and separation apart from that resiliency is a very uh, common use case and i have seen that aws based systems which are designed around cell based architecture are also resiliency use cases where you have to have either regional or uh, availability zone wise you want to create those separations as well as multiple cells floating so that's fourth use case these are the four major use cases across industry i have seen and these are popular and if you have more to share please after the session do share with me i'll also be curious to know about them now let's delve into reality every technology as a, as we we know it comes with its own challenges there are few of them but i have picked up three key areas which is needs careful consideration when it comes to cell based architecture first and foremost of that is complexity in cell coordination now what i mean by that now cell must coordinate to ensure seamless inter cell communication which can add complexity in large system let me break it down for you asanka has just touched upon types of traffic you have north south traffic and you have uh, east west traffic just by again this diagram on the first upper box we are saying that north south traffic where you are interacting with the system something coming into your system or something going out of your system be it through api calls third party integrations or whatever that's where the north south uh, communication is happening but when i say intercell communication specifically the complexity which i am pointing out is the second part of it which is the second rectangle here where in all practical situations because we are in hybrid world we are nowhere purely on the cloud public cloud or one side of the state mostly our reality is hybrid where we have polyglot systems where we have different types of communication uh, uh, channels already established and we have to live by them that's where the complexity begins and what is the key consideration there first when you have such systems where you have services talking to each other whether whether um, let's say through api so then it's very important that you standardize those communication protocols for example if you have um, high latency use cases then you might want to consider grpc if you have otherwise rest api based calling you can use so whatever whatever suits your system make sure that when you are doing the cell based architecture define these communication protocols early in your uh, plan because i have also seen the cases where if team has different understanding and different way of using then it creates a bigger chaos at the other side of the thing so better if you address this thing up front 
for event driven architectures which are decoupled communication like kafka and messaging protocols that's a different type of communication which you should establish third pattern you have is service mesh so service mesh we have used in those cases where we you have granularity you have a good sizable system i would call not large but when you have sizable system then service mesh is a good choice where it can manage your communication and obviously istio and mesh services kind of protocols fit very well there now with these three set in place mostly these are the three types of intercell communication we have seen but now let's say if i have distributed cells now it's very important if both these cells are doing same functionality for me or they have multiple copies across in my system which takes the lead when it takes the lead and who decides that the other one is taking the lead so that's where the decision of state management leader election comes into picture and uh, um, we have seen zookeeper as a very good choice of technology which is uh, practically getting used outside of course etcd also take care of your configuration fourth which nobody tells us but it's very uh, important aspect of it which is prepare for optimization means prepare for backward versioning let's say when your cell keeps on changing you have to have the versioning with your cells you have to have automated way of retrying the intercell communication so if anything goes wrong down you should have to have a way to um, keep trying it or concluding it in, into a right state this is about complex cell coordination the second thing is security and isolation providing robust security and isolation for each cell particularly in multi tenant systems is a challenge and you need practically similar to other things all the things which are required for a complex enterprise systems however some key considerations here that you should have a zero trust principle especially in case of cell based architecture because cell is standing on the principle that you are separating it it is a self contained unit it has to have its own state elasticity so that's where the zero trust comes that this cell should not trust on anybody by default enable it as you need it then comes your strict access controls because when you are not trusting then you have to have your access controls in place through various mechanisms uh, depending on what kind of system you are using third similar to that containerization for isolation that's a better way of doing it because kubernetes these days is providing us lot of mechanism to do those segregation and secure uh, mechanisms to secure our systems or cells network segmentation for intercell security we have kind of touched upon it rate limiting and quotas this is very important where uh, we have seen uh, challenges uh, we just establish it based on that okay trust is established now let's start working but when system scales this rate limiting and quota becomes a real thing and we learn it hard way so better you address it in the beginning itself that with system if sizing if it is small today and if it size then how would you be controlling the the limits and quotas third and very important thing <laughs> operational overhead because when we plan for systems we usually don't bother about operations but increased overhead for managing separate cells including monitoring logging and deploying updates across cells is essential and what are the key considerations here first this is no brainer these days you have to have a automated ci cd for streamlined deployments and updates here it's even more important just to emphasize i have kept it that cells are granular in nature so you you have to have a mechanism to automate your ci cd pipeline configuration management and consistency now there are two patterns to it which i have seen centralized is uh, what has worked for us better than the distributed um, what we mean by configuration management here is that you have um, certain things shared across certain things like secrets or some things which are managed centrally so if you keep distributed system that's also possible and it might suit in your situation but it it is less overhead if it is centralized manage third thing is centralized monitoring and alerting it works better but again if your system says that you can have a distributed system please go for it it will be an operational overhead but it might be a conscious call for you self healing and auto scaling again like we said cells 
are um, independently elastic. One is down, other one is coming up. So you have to have a mechanism that it knows that when cells are down and self-healing happens. Fourth is the additional concentration again, which is like excess controls, health checks, so, to, so you know that um, without getting into any problem and then getting solved it and getting your operational burdens. And uh, people have challenges in this space, so I'm emphasizing it that you should have um, operational overhead like health checks and excess controls taken care up in the game. Um, with that said, let's understand from Asanka what are the cell boundaries, best practices, do's and don'ts which you have seen Asanka over the period of time. Yeah, so I think this is very important uh, to understand how uh, you define cell boundaries. But before jumping into that, I'll give you uh, some advice on patterns because something I have seen as an architect, people just jump into patterns and blindly trying to implement it. Even cell architecture, don't do that. How you apply a pattern, take the pattern and put the context. Context depending on your enterprise, your problem that you are trying to uh, solve. So take that context and then identify how I am going to use this pattern without just taking it. So having said that, um, don't uh, look for a, defin a definite answer from me because it's totally depending on the context that you are working on. But I'll give you a few uh, advice based on my experience uh, how you can define cell boundaries. First way, based on the communication. Look at the communication styles. Intercell communications and intracell communications. How much communication happens within the components inside the cell is something you need to consider, as well as what's the communication pattern happening, uh, the, the, uh, the, con the communication coming to the cell, and based on that, you can define the cell boundary. And most uh, famous, as well as the most common way of defining cell boundaries that I have seen using some kind of a bounded context. So the bounded context defined by using different techniques, so domain-driven design is uh, a very uh, good way of defining that. And then if you identify the domains, then you can put cell boundaries. And domain-driven design also very interesting. My advice, don't go and read the blue color Bible. It's not domain-driven design anymore because nobody is using object orientation these days, right? So don't apply domain-driven design with object orientation. If you are willing to or looking for guidance on domain-driven design, go and read about uh, uh, the books published by Vaughan Menon. Awesome. He defines domain-driven design in a way that apply for functional programming as well as the way we are working today inside the enterprise. So uh, you can get some uh, information there. And then the next thing is theme boundaries. I think most of you are using these uh, two pizza teams, right? But you should have a way to define two pizza teams and use these teams to get a better output. Any uh, rock fans who follow Metallica? Hey, yeah. So I'll tell you a story. In 2018 and 2022, Metallica did a concert with San Francisco Symphony. It doesn't go well, right? Because Metallica on this side and Symphony on the other side. But go to YouTube and see how the harmony coming out. So the same thing inside the enterprise, right? You will get teams like Metallica, and then you will get teams like San Francisco Symphony. But as a business, what we need is a harmony from these teams. That's why it's really important to put the team boundaries, but have a way for them to communicate with each other. So cell architecture is a really good way to achieve that, that you can do this communication. So having that team boundaries is a way that you can define cell boundaries. So if you look at this, this is an example by putting some domain-driven design into practices, identify few domains. Here we have employee domain, order domain, and then customer domain, uh, so and so forth. This is just an example. Like that, you can uh, define the domains and subdomains. So in that way, a domain can be a cell or a subdomain can represent a cell. So that's an easy way to define 
these cell boundaries. So with that, um, uh, this uh, green field and brown field is a common problem that we try to address. And uh, Sweta, why don't you go through that and explain how we can handle green field and brown field? Green field and brown field is a common confusion. And I, even after my last talk in KubeCon Paris, a lot of people approach saying that what you're saying is microservices based architecture and all. Does this mean is if I don't have a microservices based architecture, can I not use it? If I'm not uh, having green field space, can I not use it? So I want to quickly touch upon because looking at the time, <laughs> I want to make sure that we give you five minutes to for some questions as well. Um, Greenfield, definitely, that's the best way to start because reason is that when you are starting fresh, that's the best premise to do any kind of architecture, not just cell-based architecture. And with the cell-based ar architecture and after doing a lot of mistakes, I'm saying, uh, or I have seen people doing a lot of mistakes, uh, if you are clear on a couple of things which we have touched upon, if you are sticking to those principles, you'll be better placed and you can do it beautifully in your system. Uh, having said that, what are the steps? Let me quickly walk you through first the green field because it's like it's a it's it's the major thing which we're doing, then we fit in the brown field. So we'll go to brown field later and yes, uh, short answer is you can use it for both. Uh, green field design use case approaches that define cells based on functional requirements um, or boundaries. We have touched upon it. It can be domain segregation, microservices, resiliency, or what is your use case? Um, let's say you have three cells. Cell one is stateless, cell two is stateful, and cell three is serverless function, let's say lambda. Now, if you have three such cells, all of them needs to be treated separately because you have to have a communication pattern, and that's where the intercell communication, which I have touched, is very important. Now, in the same system, I'm talking about cell one, cell two, cell three, which, are, which could be anything, like it could be you can relate it to inventory, order, support system, or it could be like payments and those kind of systems. So domain can differ, but let's say if you have these three kind of things, then first of all, separate it. So step two is that isolate stateful and stateless services. Because like in other systems, stateful um, cells need a bit more consideration. For example, in stateless, you will take care of your namespaces, you will take care of your isolations and networking boundaries. But on top of that, with stateful, you need to take care of your data management. That's how you're going to do. You're also going to take care of your resource quotas, caches, etc. Because if cells are going and coming back, your state has to be maintained really well. So that is an additional consideration, and that's why the separation is important. Next three steps are um, the Communication protocol again, three and four is about whether service mesh suits you, API gateway or Lambda functions based on that which cell we are talking about. And then comes your step five, which is the security and isolation, which goes hand in hand. So once you are you're having your cells clear, you will think about the boundaries, you will think about the security hand in hand. Then goes additional consideration, which comes even more with the cell consideration, which is like resource and scaling mechanism you need to take care. Ensure fault tolerance, observability, and monitoring is definitely required in case of cells. With that cell, what that said, what we have said is you have your cells, then you think about intercell separation and communication. Then we are talking about external communication. Hand in hand, we are talking about those additional considerations which we have covered: security, scale, fault tolerance, and observability. Uh, with that said, let me quickly touch upon the brown field. Now the Challenge with the brownfield is that um, understand your architectural complexity, it, it, how portable it is, how stateful in nature your system is. Is it what is the legacy consideration you should have? Then analyze the portability with respect to the cell-based architecture, monolith, stateful, stateless. Have that clarity because it's not that every case will fit into cell and we cannot force fit it. Then we'll be in a bigger problem. But if all these criteria qualify, then decide to use or not to use CBA. And there are certain considerations here, but let me not go in detail of that, uh, just to save a little bit of time here. So what we are saying is, Greenfield is the best start. Go with that, if the, your use case fits into cell-based architecture. 
brownfield, analyze it first, not to get into any problem. You can also, we have seen uh, even people um, uh, coming with the approach that first they consider um, whole thing as a cell, then they start breaking it. But usually that's a complex way of doing it. If it works for your system, please go ahead and do it. But consider it, go no go decision, and then rest all steps are same, which is like for Greenfield. Um, CBA best practice, I just want to touch upon the data because we have spoken about the application, networking, and rest all space. I'll put it up front here. So data replication and consistency is something which you'll have to plan for in cell-based architecture. Data partitioning is very, very important. How you want to do sharding, how do you want to do indexing, how would the uh, indexes would be referred back through the cells. This, is, this gives a lot of pain, so plan ahead. Eventual consistency, can your system live with that? If not, it's additional cost, but you can achieve it. Cell-based data backups, yes, that's very important uh, in cell-based architecture. With that said, I would quickly like to hear from Asanka about the industry use cases. Yeah, so first thing I would like to say, like uh, push it to the platform. You can't just write a Helm chart or um, uh, uh, deployment script uh, every time. The best way to do it, push it to the platform, and the platform today is the internal developer platform. If we are platform engineers, most of you might be working on it. So push it to the platform and make the cell a standard way of deploying and running these things. So that's the first thing. And if you are implementing it in Kubernetes, best way to do it, like uh, the simple way to do it is um, a pod is a component and a namespace is a cell. That's a simple definition. But uh, enterprise is so complicated, you need to handle a lot of stuff. So the, so the, the other way to handle it, so write a um, record definition or custom record definition of a CRD, uh, custom resource definition, CRD, and then define the cell. So I put a sample CRD that we used in one implementation, and then uh, to implement it, you can use many technologies. So here I took the CNCF catalog, and then uh, things like uh, EBPF and Cilium, we used in one implementation for the service mesh as well as observability and communication, and then we use Envoy and our own WSO2 gateway to handle the uh, traffic, so that way you can implement it, but as you see, uh, you need to put some platform engineering effort to get a cell properly and standardized inside the enterprise. Again, this is a reference implementation, and I'll not go in detail. If you need to get more information, please find me at our booth. I'll help and even do a demo of one of the reference implementations. So with that, I think uh, we would like to conclude the session. Yeah. So basically, what we are telling uh, Cell is uh, the foundation for everything, right? Similarly, Cell becomes the foundation for uh, building systems and subsystems inside the enterprise, so it can take uh, care of most of the common problems that we are seeing inside the enterprises so, um, uh, and find solutions for that. So that's where Cell-based architecture coming into the picture. I can see that we have two minutes or one and a half minute now left. So any Q&A, and I want to um, give you this opportunity to please join us for the book signing. I'll be doing book signing at booth number um, R15, DevTron booth. I think I forgot to mention here. And grab your copy if you want, please. Um, with that said, any quick question? I think we can take one. All right. So, okay. Yeah, so, when, so, what is the scale when the architecture is actually beneficial and when it gets to be overkill? Ah. So it depends on the problem that you are trying to solve. Like if it is an enterprise, I think uh, it makes sense. But if you are a like developer who is just writing a web app to do implement something, it might not make sense. Uh, so if you have like more than 10 microservices at least, in my definition, um, 10 is a good size to have one cell. Uh, so if it is not complicated, I think don't bring complication, just write your web app and then uh, push it to the, um, uh, the production. So I think if you have many teams, many microservices to deal with, there you get the complexity as well as if you have 
lot of communication that you need to secure and manage. That's where I think the uh, cell architecture makes sense. As I said, pattern plus context. So that way you can identify whether it's relevant yeah. or not. Yeah, we can see a red, but my quick Im uh, implementation side of my answer would be that it depends on people. If your team all can come together and bring a consensus, go for it. it it's possible even in the complex and the scalable systems. But if you have different, different islands, first bring them with the symmetry and then it is, it works really well. With that said, thank you all for listening to us and um, see you there outside. If more questions, we can do. Thank you very much. <laughs>